Last week, I made a series of videos talking about the top 10 Toyota vehicles we don't get here in the United States. And of course, one of them that I spoke about was the Toyota Harrier that is currently based off of a RAV4 in the previous history. It was based off the first and second gen Lexus RX. And I asked viewers during that video, I'm like, hey, do you think Toyota is going to make another Harrier because the RAV4 is growing in popularity and the, the next, let's say, uh, the next Lexus RX or NX coming out could kind of close in in terms of the top and bottom end of the Toy Toyota Harrier. Well, a week later, Toyota actually announces the new Harrier based off of the TNGA platform, specifically the K platform, which is shared with the RAV4 and the Highlander. And this could be really the next Venza as well. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, Luxurious Fleet. My name's Kirk. I cover Toyota and Lexus vehicles. That's what I specialize in. If you like that, then definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon, and let's jump into the new Toyota Harrier. Over at the Global Toyota Newsroom, there it is. You get a beautiful side profile of it. To me, it looks like a longer Lexus NX from the side. Toyota announces new Harrier, new existence beyond SUV category. Again, another sleek look. We'll definitely go through all the pictures during the video. If you want to read through all this fluff, guys, you're more than happy to. I'm going to go over the things that I feel like are going to be most important to you. A total of seven colors are set, including precious black pearls and colors with low saturation. The panoramic roof with electric shade is using dimmable glass and is adopted for the first time by Toyota. When dimming, it creates a fine space where soft light like Shoji penetrates. If you guys watched my video, I believe it was also last week where I talked about this crazy new Lexus concept that has dimmable glass and it has shape shifting availability to it. Well, obviously this doesn't have shape shifting, but we're starting to see that dimmable glass that was available on that vehicle. And Lexus also hinted at it with the LF30 concept, that full electric concept that they debuted last year. Three interior colors such as brown, gray, and black with reduced contrast expressing a chic adult indoor space with a calm atmosphere. There's a wood-like decoration and piping inspired by Makiki and is arranged throughout the vehicle. So I scroll down to the asterisks here. Makiki is a woodworking technique in which wood is steamed or boiled to increase plasticity, placed in a mold, dried as it is, and shaped into a desired curve. In addition, products manufactured by the technique. So that's something to look forward to is unique Makiki wood bending. There's a picture of that dimmable glass. Again, and this is something that kind of bothers me a little bit with Toyota and Lexus products. They do offer quite a few panoramic roofs. Well, the huge bar in the middle, I know it's for rigidity and I know it's for safety, but man, it really kills the experience um, of that full, beautiful panoramic glass that we see in a lot of competitors. Of course, we know it's based off the TNGAK platform, which creates higher rigidity and lower center, center of gravity to pursue both ride comfort and driving with emphasis on driver sensitivity. The suspension adopts McPherson strut type at the front and double wishbone type at the rear. Now, it also comes with active cornering assist that suppresses understeer during cornering by brake control. So active cornering assist was finally added to the 2021 LC500. Make sure to watch that video because there are new updates on the LC for 2021 as well. And probably the most exciting thing about this, or I guess the biggest difference is, other than the TNGAK platform, my new, new redesign, is gonna be the power plants. So equip the latest dynamic force engine renewed by TNGA and a direct shift CVT. Along with the ever-evolving hybrid system, we pursue direct driving with excellent fuel efficiency. Two-wheel drive models are available for hybrid and other options. So now going to my favorite place, Wikipedia. <laughs> if you look at the third generation Harrier here, it had the two liter 8R, 8AR FTS. That is seen on many Lexus models most notably the NX200 uh, or the NX300, but they are dropping that for this fourth generation, which is, to me, that, that's kind of tough because you're reducing the power, 
that is available for this new fourth generation. So let's dive in what kind of power it does have. You can read through all the specifications here. They, I just love how they come out with every single metric uh, when they're really close to debuting this vehicle. And by the way, it's supposed to come out in June. So in just a couple months here, uh, again, only for the, to my knowledge, only for the Japanese market. Okay, so the, the motors that they get is the, four, the two liter four cylinder option that is in the front wheel drive Lexus UX200. And that motor, it has a unique uh, transmission to it. It has a, a, a real physical gear for first gear. And then it switches to simulated gears through a CVT after that. And it is not, in my opinion, I don't like it. It's not very snappy. The first gear is okay. Then after that, it gets really sloppy. And it's just not a lot of power. And that's a much smaller vehicle. So the fact that they're putting that, and, and keep in mind, this is a Japanese market. They, they're, I'm sure they don't go as fast as they do here, but man, the base, the base motor is going to be 171 horsepower, which is up two horsepower from the Lexus UX version. The version that you would want to get is a carried over hybrid system that is updated with a little bit more efficiency and horsepower. So now you're gonna have a total. So you, go, you, got, you wanna go to system maximum output here, a total of 218 horsepower and 222 pound-feet of torque. This is the same setup that's in the current Highlander. It's gonna be the same setup that's in the current RAV4 hybrid and very, very similar to the system that's set up in the Lexus ES300H. Of course, it's gonna have the newest suite of Toyota Safety Sense. It will have the first digital inner mirror that can record front and rear images while driving. To me, this is a very similar mirror that the current RAV4 has since the 20, was it the 2019 redesign for the RAV4? You can have a digital mirror. It sounds like this is going to be more like a dash cam where it can record things going on in front and behind the vehicle, but we don't have a whole lot of information on that. That's more speculation on my end. What I'm really excited about is the accessory outlet of 1500 watts is on the hybrid vehicles. I first saw this on the next gen, or it's the current generation now of the brand new Yaris that we don't get here in America, which is also in the top 10 vehicles that we don't get here in America. And the new Yaris is, is essentially a, and same thing with this Harrier, is a generator. And they say you can use it for emergency situations. How awesome you can run your entire house on a vehicle now. So that gets, that gets me really, really excited. And I hope to see this pretty much go throughout the entire Toyota lineup as they hybridize everything because this makes it super handy for camping or if you wanna go on a trip, like you can power anything you want off the vehicle now. Super, super cool. And it is going to have the 12.3 inch uh, touch widescreen display that is in the new 2020 RX350. And it definitely looks like a Harrier. I mean, there's no doubting about it. I had to compare images side by side and I'll do that for you here. So you can, so you can see how similar it is. Of course, that new grill there is very, very modern Toyota, very Highlander like in my opinion. Forgot to mention 19 inch wheels are standard on the vehicle. I don't know if there's going to be a 20 inch option or not. Very, very slim down rear taillights. I think it looks good. It's and and I think this bar that's going across all the way here, that's not the rear brake light. It's just going to be here, here, and then at the top you see this very long light. Now, it would have been nice that it continued along the back here in a very soft glow. Well, it might, and it's not for the brake light, but maybe it's just the nighttime lights that come on. Maybe there's a really soft glow that goes across the back here. That would be nice. The interior looks very, very modern, very, very much like the new RAV4, the new Highlander. Um, to me, it's minimalistic. It's very practical. It looks good. It's clean. I have no issues with it. And how these seats look from the side, they look in terms of the design, they're very similar to Lexus, but definitely not. Of course, they're not going to have the semi inline leather in there. The new headlights look great. Very similar to the new Highlander's headlights, in my opinion, just a different design. I think these headlights look better. Uh, cup holders, whatever. I don't know why you take a picture of the cup holders, Toyota. And then here's a picture of that rear view or front view mirror that takes pictures. Could it take video as well? I would, I would hope so. Um, if they're going to have this sort of technology in the vehicle. So that was definitely unexpected to get this new Harrier for the Japanese market. And what does it mean for us here in the United States? Well, we, some people are saying that this is, you know, definitely a, a look at the next generation RX maybe 
Um, I think it's definitely more of a look at the next generation Venza that we're supposed to get here this fall in the United States. And in fact, it could be almost identical to this vehicle. That would be my gut feeling. We're supposed to get this new Venza, like I said, this year, maybe around the same time the new Sienna comes out, which is late summer, early fall is what I'm hearing. And it also is rumored potentially to be fully hybrid. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but I think this Harrier definitely could be the next Venza. It would make a lot of sense from a design point of view, um, et cetera. But what do you guys think? Do you like the looks of it? I think it's all right. It looks a lot like the current Harrier and I don't think that's a bad thing. It also shares a lot with, I think, the Highlander. It almost looks like a scrunched down Highlander. So I look forward to speaking with you guys in the comments. If you like the video, definitely smash that like button and holy cow guys, new Harrier, good times. I'll see you in the comments below. Stay safe, I love you, peace out.